what's going on everybody this is john j gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the ncsl sim league dynasty exclusively here on college football revamp we are starting to close in on the end of the regular season here in the inaugural year of the ncsl and we have a lot of action coming at you here in this episode as we actually have a record for a number of top 25 matchups that are going to be happening well throughout the ncsl here in this gameplay episode we'll be going through the entirety of week number 11 that will feature 16 nationally televised games and not only will it include 16 nationally televised games but five top 25 matchups those will all be shown here throughout this gameplay episode as well. And then, of course, we'll wrap that up. We're going to take a look at how the college football playoff poll is going to be showing. And then also take a look at some of the other scores around the league that we may or may not get a chance to that might have initially fallen through the cracks, but will not fall through the cracks with me because, you know, we like to keep things well updated here in the NCSL. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Lots of action here in this episode, obviously. And if you're ready for it, I need you guys to go ahead and do me a huge favor. Go ahead and smack that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do have to be brand new. Let's go ahead and hop onto the fields throughout the country for today's action. So we get this action started with mostly checking in on the Midwest and most notably seeing our first of five top 25 matchups throughout the country here today. But we're going to start with Illinois taking on Notre Dame. Notre Dame no longer part of that top 25 and one little bit of a losing streak they lost to navy last episode they also lost to usc so really need to get back on track against illinois which this fighting illini team this is the first time i believe that we have seen them on national television at least this season we'll see what this illinois team is all about as they try to get above 500 and get closer to bowl eligibility but Notre Dame making that really difficult on them right now as Notre Dame coming out uh, out the gate extremely hot. They're already going to be up 30 to nothing and we are not even at halftime yet. We're not even close to halftime. They are rocking and rolling right now and this Notre Dame team, they came out here and they really exercised some demons out here today. They really needed this type of performance. And that's exactly what they got as Notre Dame starts the episode off hot. They beat Illinois 57 to 21. Meanwhile, keeping it in the new look Mid-American Conference, Louisville goes on the road to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee. They were ranked in the top 25, this Tennessee team, um, after they beat Georgia. But since then, they've been on a two-game losing streak themselves. If they're not careful, they could be missing out on bowl season altogether. So very important for Tennessee to really get their stuff together. And they're going to have to do that by being a solid Louisville squad. Which, if Louisville can win this game, they will be going to bowl season. They will have a guaranteed spot. But the Volunteers making that difficult as they jump to a 13-0 lead. Make that possibly... A 16-0 lead as we get our first studio update of this episode. We check in on BYU, taking on Utah State, which that, this was supposed to be a nationally televised game that we are going to look into, but because of other top 25 games that weren't nationally televised, you know, we had to go ahead and take a look uh, at that other game, which will be shown later in this episode as Louisville tries to throw it into the end zone before the end of the first half. I would have settled for the field goal. It probably would look better on the scoreboard, but they didn't do that. Louisville ends the half with an interception. And the Volunteers are rolling today. They are certainly rolling pretty well. They jumped to a 19-0 lead. They've had plenty of red zone opportunities. They just haven't been able to finish some of those red zone opportunities necessarily. As Louisville still sort of in this game, down by 16. But they are going to throw it out to Ricky Nelson, who's going to try to get them into a goal line situation. We'll see if they can punch it in, though, as a couple plays later, both teams in the goal line set. And 
Jamal Williams is just going to take it to the outside. Goes away where everybody else was. And, hey, just uses that speed to find the end zone. They do try to go for that two-point conversion. That was not successful. So it is still going to be a two-possession game in spite of that. As we now find ourselves in the fourth quarter of action. Looking over the right-hand side. Landrum finds his receiver. Houston... We have a problem. I'm wide but naked open. And he finds the end zone for the touchdown. So Louisville looking really good trying to get back in. Uh, at least Louisville, not Louisville, Tennessee. Tennessee is looking really good to get their fourth win of the year. But Louisville not going down quietly as they go into a five-line set. Facing pressure as this quarterback looks right into the gun and finds Mike Thomas for the first down. As the Cardinals will try to run it into the end zone. And it looks like Jamal Williams again scores for the Cardinals. So this game could get a little interesting. But before we see the final of this game, we get a final from other parts of the country. Where Eastern and Western Michigan, two rivals, they were going at it. And we just got the final. Eastern Michigan's going to win 35-28. to They're going bowling. And then we also hear from BYU... And Utah State as well. BYU, they get one step closer to being bowl eligible. As Utah State has been embarrassing this season. Now just 1-9. They lose again, 38-17. But that touchdown that Louisville scores was the closest that they were going to get. As they also lose to the Tennessee Volunteers, 26-16. But now we get into top 25 action. The first of five top 25 games. That we will see here in this episode. Ole Miss, who's ranked number 9 in the entire country. They're taking on the number 12 ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. And this is a critical conference matchup here late in the season. Big implications within the Dixie Division of the Sun Belt Conference. Whoever wins this game, they're going to really control their own destiny in terms of going to that conference championship. And this Ole Miss team on the road, playing in the snow. I'm sure these Ole Miss guys, some of them might have not ever seen snow before. Well, they're not phased right now as the Rebels take a 7-0 lead before Terrence Manson tries to throw one into the end zone, but he's going to be intercepted. You absolutely hate to see it. Red zone turnovers makes any co coach's blood absolutely boil that's points that you're taking off the table but Terrence Manson who threw that interception well he's gonna make up for it in a big way he's gonna find Stefan Castillo for a 66 yard touchdown strike and the Rebels get rolling after that ballooning this lead up to a 17 nothing lead and again finding Jonathan Holt in the back of the end zone another touchdown for Ole Miss 24 to nothing before Arkansas finally gets some sort of offense going that ends in positive results. Tanner Crawford finally breaks the goose egg off the scoreboard. They will go for the two-point conversion, however, and Ole Miss, well, they are simply all over that right now. So Ole Miss still down by multiple possessions. They did get a field goal as well off screen. So trying to build a little bit of momentum. But a fumble is going to be scooped up. And we are going to see a scoop and score. Shannon McConnell was the one who forced that fumble. And he has set the school record for most sacks in a season. That was his 12th sack of the year. Been an absolutely dominant year for that defensive lineman. As Ole Miss wins absolutely big. We got a couple of other top 25 matchups that we are going to watch out for. Army in Pittsburgh. Uh, that was one of the games that was originally supposed to be a regionally televised game. But it's a top 25 matchup. So y'all already know I was going to watch over this game. And give y'all the scoop of what happened, right? And this has been a very competitive division in the Union Division of Conference USA. This is how the standings are looking like as of right now. Pittsburgh and Army they, uh, trying to uh, get some better footing within the division. Army needs this win, and then they'll need a little bit of help from Pittsburgh and Syracuse in order to go to the conference championship. Well, Pittsburgh's trying to keep pace with 
the Syracuse Orange. Syracuse undefeated, ranked in the top five. We'll see them play later on in this episode, but Army is going to strike first as George Slaughter, not known for passing the football. You know how it is with those triple option teams and with the military academies. That's like pairing burgers and fries, but we see Army make an incredible play on the defensive side of the ball. I actually thought initially this pass snuck through. I was wrong. And that's really been the tone of this game. A very defensive affair. But in the fourth quarter, we really start seeing things pick up as Edmund O'Donnell. He almost takes it to the crib. Does get caught from behind. He does get over 100 yards receiving on the day. But Pittsburgh's got to get a touchdown here. And they will. Going back to Edmund O'Donnell. O'Donnell is going to tie this game here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The stadium's called something else now, but this is Heinz Field in my mind. And how about this? A fumble. Pittsburgh's going to pick it up. We'll see if they can take advantage of this turnover. Army was trying to get a drive going here the last few minutes of the game. But they can't do anything with the ball. And Army able to drive down at the very last second. Hand the ball off to Paul Martin. And the rest was history. Army is going to pull a big-time win in conference play against the Pittsburgh Panthers, 17-10. It was a very defensive affair up until that fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, we certainly saw some fireworks, but the Black Knights, they will prevail. But now we go over to the West Coast as we check in on the Oregon Ducks, taking on the Bears of California. Two teams still ranked in the top 25, even though both teams... Lost in the previous episode. Oregon, we saw them lose to Nevada in a studio update. Whereas Cal, they took on Oregon State and lost. So this has also been a very competitive division as well. One that also has Washington in as well. I would not be surprised if I saw a college football playoff team come from this particular conference. Whether it be Washington or USC. But... Cal might have something to say about it. So could Oregon. And Cal jumps up to a pretty good lead here early. Up 10 to nothing already. However, a critical mistake as Oregon is going to force a turnover. And they're going to start the drive in California territory. Exactly what they needed because this Cal Oregon offense has not been rolling today. This is a more of a offensive minded school. But they can't do anything with the turnover. And Mad Black, he's going to pick himself up by the bootstraps. And he's going to throw a touchdown on the very next possession. Cal does take a 17-0 lead into halftime. So we'll see if Oregon uh, can pick themselves back up as well. As Oregon is a team that really likes to run the football. They're not a triple option team per se. But they do like to run the football. This quarterback does not pass very often. And Will Forrest being forced to pass the ball maybe a little bit more often as this team is already down by 17 points could be in for a very long afternoon as we see yet another turnover big play downfield which will lead to a california field goal so now 20 to nothing in favor of cal and Oregon needs some big plays and needs them quickly. He's going to run out to the outside. Breaks a tackle. My running back going down the sideline. He's only got a safety left to beat. And he's going. No, he's still up. He gets out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Just couldn't keep his balance there. That's crazy, though. And, Ca and Oregon with a chance to finally put points on the board. And they do. Courtesy of Jeff Brady. They needed some points on this drive. And they got him. So Oregon, no longer with the goose egg. Got the stop on defense. And here comes the Oregon Ducks. They're trying to quack back. Jeff Brady, he's starting to get rolling here. Get the biscuits out because they're on a roll on the ground. Brady, end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Lee Pierce is going to make this just a one possession game with four minutes left to play in the ball game. But they got to keep them. From scoring any further points, they do not accomplish that as Dominic Harvey, he may be putting in that finishing dagger 
And they're also going to go for two. They're going to go for two just to be safe. And could have had a two-point conversion if you just catch the football. You had literally one job. Catch the football. Lock it into your hands. He doesn't do that. Luckily, it doesn't hurt them, though, as California, who's had a pretty tough schedule here. It's been a pretty rough conference to try to navigate. They will get to eight and three, while Oregon, just undefeated a couple weeks ago, they lose their second straight game. So now we have a bunch of games going off, featuring a lot of intriguing matchups for sure. We're going to start off with Oklahoma, take it on Oklahoma State. Neither team is ranked in the top 25, but Oklahoma could be a team that could get into the top 25, 6-2 on the season, and a more well-known program, so I'm actually surprised that they aren't ranked in the top 25 already, but... You know, if they can take care of business here in the Bedlam game, big rivalry game between two of the bigger schools in the state of Oklahoma. Could be talking about a different story, but before we jump into that game any further, we do have a studio update out on the West Coast. Arizona and Colorado, they're going at it right now. Arizona has the lead, and they need to win this game. If they want to keep their bowl hopes alive, they already have six losses. But here we are in the second quarter and still have not really seen too much scoring in this game just yet. It's literally have just been field goals between these two particular teams. But when we get into the second half, though, things get pretty spicy. Bill Florida, he's going to hand the ball off to Kevin Corbett. And Corbett, he's been having a fine season. He's putting together a good campaign. He's got 134 yards on the ground. They've really been rocking with him today. We'll see if he gets the pitch here yet again. But it looks like instead, it's Bill for Warnock, who is going to take the speed option. Picks up the first down. And here we are, midway through the third quarter. Might see our first offensive touchdown of the game. And we got it for Corbett. Kevin Corbett extends the lead for Oklahoma. And the Sooners, with a 15-point lead, they'll go for the two-point conversion. And Corbett is going to score. But we'll take a quick break to check another studio update on this Arizona-Colorado game. It's a very competitive ball game between these two teams as Colorado. Trying to prove as well that they are a top 25 caliber squad. Arizona, however, still has that 7-point lead. Can they hold on? So here we are towards the back end of the third quarter of action. Oklahoma has the ball yet again. Throws over to the right hand side. And it's going to be called a touchdown on the field. Bill Forwarda throws his first passing touchdown. And Oklahoma State in some deep trouble right now. They need some points in quickly. Throwing over to the right hand side for Reggie Reed. Asking him to do something. But Oklahoma was all over it. Forcing a third and long. Dropping back. Looks over to left hand side. They're going to pick up the first down. And a little bit more after that. Does move the sticks. We'll see if they go into their no huddle. It looks like they are trending in that direction. As third and long. Throwing over to the right hand side. And he finds an open. Curtis Spence in the end zone. They bamboozle them with a fake screen. And the Cowboys do score. And will go for two to make this a two possession game. That's successful. So Kevin McKenzie makes it a two score game. And the Oklahoma State defense, it does its job as well. So the Cowboys can just make it a one score game. And it might be, depending on what happens with the two point conversion. If they get this two point conversion, this game could get very interesting. And they do. And with that, we'll take another studio update, a little commercial break. But to check in on Arizona and Colorado, speaking of those close games, Arizona has a seven-point lead with five minutes left to play. It's going down to the wire. So here we are with less than two minutes left to play in the ball game. Cowboys with a chance to tie. They're going to throw down the right inside. It's going to be caught. We got a broken tackle. He's going to be gone. Touchdown. Andre Cole is going to score. Let's go, baby. And so they just need a two-point conversion. Looks over to the right-hand side. And Connor Thomas gets the 10 toes down. And now the pressure is on Oklahoma as they try to answer a less overtime. 
could be in the back of their minds, but it looks like we have another score. We're going to have another score unless there's a flag. Mike Nolan with a 73-yard reception. And Oklahoma hangs on and wins. They almost blew it. They almost blew it, but they do win the Bedlam game. So now we check in on some of the teams that we could see in the first college football playoff here in the NCSL. We start with Syracuse. They are at home in the Carrier Dome. They're taking on Boston College. Boston College playing with some desperation. If they lose today, they will not be bowl eligible here in year number one. And Jacob Blake, he's going to throw it up to Reggie Ingram. He's going to score the touchdown. And the Orange open th things up in the game. 14-3 being your score. But Boston College does move down the field before the end of the half to make it a one-score game. So could still go in either direction for sure. But Syracuse, you know, this fan base is absolutely electric right now. They have not seen a team like this in an extremely long time. Dare I say it, they might be the Cinderella's of college football right now nobody expecting what Syracuse has been able to do right now but Boston College trying to make sure that clock strikes midnight they're gonna go for the two-point conversion to make this a seven-point game to see if they can make things interesting trying to go up the middle of the field and he had Ross Wine in the end zone he just didn't put enough air on that ball plus he got hurt so that's a double L there Syracuse, while they didn't put their best performance forward here today, they're still undefeated and still on track to make the playoff. Speaking of that playoff, though, another team that could work its way in there is the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State is ranked number seven in the entire country. They're taking on the Golden Flashes of Kent State. And this Ohio State team, when it's humming, they are one of the best teams in the entire country. Nobody wants to play them when they are rolling at max efficiency, right? This Ohio State team. And I think we're starting to see more of that. We saw flashes of it at the beginning of the season. Their offense struggled in the middle. Some close games that honestly shouldn't have been close at all. But Ohio State, they're looking to make this a 26-point lead. And Ross... Tucker, he's going to find the end zone, and that's a touchdown for the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll cut into about the fourth quarter. Still a similar score, but the Golden Flashes uh, do get a field goal up. So, Ohio State, they handle their business, do what they're supposed to do. They blow out the Golden Flashes at Ohio Stadium by a lot. So we'll see if Miami can also blow out a team that they should blow out. As they're taking on Florida Atlantic, which at this point in the season, Florida Atlantic, uh, they're really not playing for very much more than pride and really just trying to make sure that their coaching staff doesn't get fired. Because when you have a season like this, you know, that question of whether your coach is going to be there next year really does become a legitimate question and in a bad way as well. So... We'll see if this FAU team plays with some pride and is able to make this a competitive game against the Miami Hurricanes. But it is certainly going to be a pretty tall task. Miami, one of the most dominant teams that we have seen here in season number one. We'll see if Carter can live up to that as he throws over the middle. He finds his receiver, Marvin Downey, who picks up a gain of seven. And we're now looking at a first and goal. Now cutting to a second and goal. Looking for another run. Jeff Sanders. He's going to run up the gut. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Miami Hurricanes. And they and FAU, they are right in the eye of the hurricane right now. They are in the thick of it. As Miami has yet another red zone opportunity. Throws it out to the left-hand side. Breaks the tackle. Breaks the second. But Chris Thompson cannot remain in bounds. Still a pretty good gain, though. That goes for a gain of 15 yards on his first reception of the day before Casey Carter gets it out to Jeff Sanders on the perimeter and is yet another touchdown for Miami. And Jeff Sanders is going to set a single record. Uh, didn't get a good glimpse of what that record was, but Miami's going to blow out FAU, and it wasn't even close from the start. 
So now we got a few more games coming in right now. We got uh, most notably number 13 Navy. Uh, they're going to be taking each other uh, on, taking on Rutgers, who was undefeated at one point. So they were 4 and 0 oh to start the season. That Rutgers team squad went on a five game losing streak. But before we check that game out, we'll check out NC State taking on the Duke Blue Devils. First time that we're going to see this Duke squad this season. But before we get into that any further, we do get a studio update, though. Uh, lots of uh, finals uh, being pronounced. Most notably, North Carolina. They're going to blow out Old Dominion as they try to prove that they're a top 25 team. But, yeah, Duke, we have not really seen much this season. They're just 2-6 and six in the uh, first season of William McNair's uh, defensive coaching tenure for the Duke Blue Devils. He's starting his coaching career off, which... You know, at the end of the season, if you're interested in being a custom coach or being a custom player, you know, definitely recommend checking out either my channel membership program or checking out my Discord uh, if you can't afford to, you know, handle my uh, channel membership program. You don't need to be a channel member to enjoy my content fully, obviously. My, I will never put certain content behind a paywall, but it is an incentive for, you know, those of you that do want to support my channel in a more personal way you know you can uh do that if you so uh wish to do so but looks like duke's playing pretty well in this rivalry game they're going to be up 21 to 6 uh but before we go into the halftime break we do get a couple of studio updates east carolina they're playing with some pride right now they beat the virginia cavaliers 33 to 24 and virginia you know another tough loss yet again competitive in the game they're competitive in the game but can't close the deal speaking of not able to close the deal purdue almost pulls the upset on the number 19 team in the entire country however michigan state's able to pull it together they went on the road so with that being said we jump into the second half of action duke still has a 21 to 6 lead and after this field goal it now becomes an 18 point lead so duke's feeling pretty good at the moment but they got to get some stops here in the red zone, though, as they're going to run it up the gut. And how about this run by Kevin Hood? They had him on a second and long, and you give up 14 yards. You absolutely hate to see it. So now it's third and short. They go back to the ground game. Read option, and it's an absolute killer in NCAA 14. Those that play this game for quite a bit knows that the read option is, is hard to uh, contain for the CPU. But before we get into this fourth quarter, huge studio update potentially as UCLA on upset launch against the Hawaii Warriors. So here we are in the fourth quarter and NC State, they work themselves back into this ball game. It is far from over and this quarterback is going to take off Mason Jackson. Again, killing him on that read option. Basically first and goal now. First down marker at the one yard line. Gonna not actually pitch the ball, and Mason Jackson is gonna give the Wild Wolfpack the lead. This Duke squad was up by 18, and they blew the lead. And the lead might be blown even wider. North Carolina getting another field goal up. And so the Wolfpack down by 18. Respond by getting 24 unanswered points in the second half. And it's certainly a heartbreaking loss if you're the Duke Blue Devils fan. So we'll check in on another non-top 25 ranked matchup. Out in the West Coast, we got Colorado State taking on the Utes of Utah. And this Utah team did come in with a lot of hype. They started the season in the top 25. Um, but they just not lived up to expectations so far this season. So, I mean, you hate to see it, but it is what it is, though. Uh, Colorado State, though, they didn't come with the same expectations. So, 4-4 four four is not that bad for them, but could be in for an exciting game here as both teams trying to position them better in conference play as we get into that final third of the season of those last three to four games for both teams. As this could be a 14-0 lead, they run it in, and they do with Phil Carter. He's going to get a touchdown run there. Allows Colorado State to build on this lead. And it looks like they might be taking a two-score lead into the halftime locker room as Utah fails to bring the ball down the field. 
and score a touchdown themselves. So it'll be 21 to 10 at the half. But now we jump into that second half of action and Utah trying to claw their way back into this game a little bit more. They will kick another field goal before the end of the third quarter. And then we jump into that fourth quarter. Things get wild. Dropping back. Looking around. He's got all day to throw. Looks over the middle. Crowded end zone, but finds Anthony Brooks for the touchdown. And Anthony Brooks is going to set a record for most receiving touchdowns in a career. 26 touchdowns for that young man right there. So congratulations to him. And they will also get the two-point conversion as well. So it cuts it to just a one-score game. But Colorado State looking to shut the door. McBride, he's going to try to run it out on the perimeter. And it's going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. They will also go for the two-point conversion as well. McBride, he scored on the touchdown. Well, he'll also take care of business on the two-point conversion as well. 35-21. to 21. So now Utah not only needing the score... They'll also need to get the onside kick. They do have all their timeouts, but if they don't get the onside kick, it's going to be very hard to get this football back. And unfortunately, Colorado State does recover the onside kick, and they will hang on the win on the road, winning 35-28. to But now we'll see Navy, number 13 in the country, take on Rutgers. And this Rutgers team is in the middle of a five game losing streak right now they started the season four and oh and speaking of teams that are down bad new mexico is one of them they're gonna get their doors blown off by unlv who will improve to a seven and three record so we'll see if Rutgers can finally break their losing streak but it'll be di kind of difficult to uh take down navy navy was playing some pretty good ball last week against notre dame on the road this is yet another road matchup. However, Rutgers made this game ugly. So here's the Scarwood Knights with less than three minutes left to play in this entire game. A chance to win if they can get one more stop. Second and seven, though. They're going to hand the ball up the middle to the fullback, and he's going to be rumbling and stumbling his way inside the five-yard line. Marcus Golden is going to get him in. But let's see if they go back to him. It's a different running back who's going to run in the end zone. That's Lorenzo Bell with the score. Now it's Navy with the lead. And all they need is one stop to win this game. 135. Left to play. Rutgers needs a big play. Finds a receiver. That's a first down for the Scarlet Knights. And they still have three timeouts left to work with as well. They're not using them just yet. As this quarterback, he's going to try to scramble. Hang on now. Ball's on the ground. Hang on now. Is this going to spell another loss for Rutgers? Oh, no. You just hate to see it, but Navy can't take advantage. They go free and out in the next possession, and their kicker can't kick that far, unfortunately. He's not in those conditions. So Rutgers gets one more chance, and Larry Robinson, he's going to cash in. He is going to cash in on a 75-yard strike. Oh, my goodness. When you just think that Rutgers is going to go down and lose yet another game, they find a way. They find a way to fight and claw with their fingernails. And now it's Navy that's going to be feeling the pressure right now. 51 seconds left. They need a touchdown to win. It's all or nothing. Walker drops back, throws it to the right hand side, and throws a dime to Brett Johnson. 20-yard reception. Navy does use a timeout, though. They got one left. Walker throws again over the middle, finds a receiver. He's going to be brought down in the middle of the field. But Navy working themselves in a, in a good spot. First and 10 with 33 seconds left to play. Walker facing some pressure, tries to throw the out route, but it's well covered. And Rutgers is going to slam the door. Walker absolutely beside himself. He can't believe he threw that ball. And Rutgers does break their five-game losing streak. And also pulling the upset against Navy at the same time. So now we see some more matchups come in late in the evening. As we'll see Alabama go on the road in Death Valley. 
and take on the number 10 ranked LSU Tigers. And his LSU squad start off as preseason number one and maybe have not fully lived up to those expectations, but a win here will help them keep pace with the Razorbacks of Arkansas, who did just lose. They did most recently lose uh, to Ole Miss. So that being said, big moment here for LSU. Got to win this game if they want to keep pace with them. Second quarter now, we still have no score, but we start to see some offensive movement down the sideline, gets across the 50-yard line. It's a huge first down as Lee Jean gets the LSU Tigers across midfield, and it sets up a scoring opportunity for the Tigers, trying to set up the halfback screen, finds Sean Callahan in the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Anthony Williams has, does not throw the football very often for LSU, but he came in there and make a big impact. Speaking of making it big impacts, Curtis West throwing a big ball down the right-hand side. He's going to find Scott Walker for the answering touchdown as well, and Alabama will tie this game up. Midway through the second quarter now. Still a tie ball game at seven apiece. Williams got all day to throw. He's going to decide to run with it, though. And Williams got some space down the sideline. He ends up sliding at about the 30-yard line. Very good business decision there as he was going to get absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree if he stayed on his feet. You want to avoid those concussions when you can because you can throw dimes like that to Lee Jean, who throws... Yet another touchdown in four passes. He has two passing touchdowns to his name. So Alabama looking to answer back with less than four minutes left as Wes tries to throw over to the right-hand side, but I don't know what he's looking at. I really don't know what he's looking at. That was an easy interception for William Merritt, and he'll take it all the way back to the crib. Another touchdown for the LSU Tigers is now Williams looks over to the right hand side he'll throw the ball over to Lee to Ken Robertson actually he's going to get involved nice little 25 yard reception there set up a goal line opportunity now Williams facing some pressure but fires an absolute missile to Ken Robertson and Anthony Williams he's on fire right now ain't nobody touching him he only has one incompletion so far in this game doing a very good job being efficient with the football it's a big reason why lsu has a big lead that they're working under as of right now as curtis west looks to answer back he's got time in the pocket lsu only brings two he decides to finally try to throw over the middle and it's picked off nine people in coverage and you don't decide to run with it that's why alabama is five and three because of decisions like that from their quarterback very questionable decisions and anthony williams gonna make him pay for it in a big way as he finds jelani williams this time into the end zone for yet another touchdown for the tigers and lsu wins big they beat alabama 35 to 7 and it'll help them keep pace with arkansas in the bayou division so just a few more games left in this episode as we'll check in on Georgia going on the road. Late non-conference game taking on the Commodores of Vanderbilt. And this team on paper, Vanderbilt is going to have a really hard time with Georgia. If there's any chance for Georgia to not blow out Vanderbilt, it's going to have to come down, down to that turnover battle. Because if Georgia doesn't turn the football over, I don't see any scenario where Vanderbilt can win this game. To keep it honest with you guys but second and three as i'm talking about turnovers what happens vanderbilt gets to a stat they get a turnover and look at him he's loose down the sideline can anyone catch him i don't think anyone will and vanderbilt ties the game jackson ties the game as he picks the pocket of andre bryant and that was because of the pressure that vanderbilt was able to force up front so vanderbilt actually does time the game up at seven apiece but this georgia team oh man georgia's got a lot of talent man they got a ton of talent right now and they got a goal line situation andre bryant looking for a touchdown he's gonna stiff arm a man into the next century 
and Georgia retakes the lead. And Vanderbilt tries to answer back. 14 to 7, your score. Looks over to the left hand side. Finds Burnett Washington. Touchdown thrown by Demetrius Ingram. And we now have ourselves a tie football game. 14 apiece as Georgia looking to answer back. They struggle through this game thus far, but maybe starting to wake up a little bit here towards the end of this first half as Bryant does throw his first touchdown pass of the game. Following drive, Bryant looking for another big play downfield. Looks over the middle of the field, and it's going to be his receiver who gets down, but not still crossing the 15-yard line. Another red zone opportunity for the Georgia Bulldogs, and they go to their running back who absolutely abuses the defensive front for Vanderbilt. Look where they made contact with him, and then look where they actually end up bringing him down. Absolutely crazy. Vanderbilt not ready for the physicality of Georgia right now as Vanderbilt down by 15, but they're not giving up. They're playing in a good effort in this game, a much more competitive game than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you guys. I really did think that this was going to be a blowout, but while Georgia does end up winning the game, they did struggle in the second half and only win by 12 points. But now, with just a couple more games left in this episode, most notably, we got Baylor taking on Texas A&M, which is the thumbnail game. That's the thumbnail that y'all see on this uh, before clicking on this video. But before we get to that Baylor and Texas A&M game, we'll go to UCF going on the road to take on Florida State. And Florida State put together a pretty good effort. They couldn't get the job done against Miami, but... They were really competitive against Miami. That game really could have gone either way. So we'll see if Florida State can put together a good effort because they have a pretty good football team. Just the difference between Florida State and maybe some of the better teams in the country is consistency. And Florida State, well, they win this game against UCF, but they look terrible to be honest with you guys. And now we get into the final game here in this episode. We got Baylor. Taking on Texas A&M. Baylor coming in ranked number 8 in the entire country. Where Texas A&M, they come in ranked number 15. And this is a big game. Massive conference implications. Possibly college football playoff implications. Well, as whoever wins this game will control their destiny in the Alamo division. And winning that division automatically gets you into the conference championship. Although, what I really wish could be a thing in... Uh, EA college football is whether uh, you can make it divisional divisionless to where uh, just top two teams go to a conference championship no matter what happens so hopefully that's in the EA college football game because uh, maybe it will maybe it won't be you never know what could happen with that but we got a tie game early all knotted up at seven apiece here and Texas a and is going to throw a strike over to the left hand side finds Ben Russ put a lot of velocity on that ball there for certain however it does not lead to a touchdown they will have to settle for a 40 yard field goal thankfully their kicker is more than ready for it as Texan A&M still only up by six trying to throw downfield themselves had a receiver did have a receiver downfield but just did not put enough air under that football and that's gonna be the first turnover that we've seen in this game Nahemian cock is going to be responsible for that interception and now the Aggies will take over across midfield looking around got some time looks over to the right hand side is going to be completed to Ben Russ for a gain of 22 yards but again can't get into the end zone they can't punch it in they gotta settle for yet another field goal here as well so 16 to 7 now your score as we get into the second half Lawrence Hughes really starting to cook here in the second half he finds a receiver downfield and it's gonna be a touchdown as jared morris with a 74 yard touchdown reception kyle field is absolutely going off right now but they'll go for the two-point conversion trying to throw over to the right hand side but they cannot convert that two-point conversion so a 15 point lead here for texas a&m but 
it's not like they'll need that two-point conversion because in this second half, it really was all Texas A&M in this game. Another touchdown by Vandermeulen to make it 29-7. to And then this Baylor quarterback just trying to make something happen here late in the game. Really started the press here in the second half. Baylor not necessarily used to being in these big time uh, situations. And so they really start to crumble here in the fourth quarter as Hughes looks for one score. And he's going to get it. He's going to find Jaron Morris for the second time in the, the night game. And Texas A&M rolls in an absolutely crucial game in the Alamo division. Texas A&M blowing out Baylor 36-7. Not only controlling their own destiny in the Alamo division, but they might have stopped Baylor's title hopes as well. But now let's go ahead and take the time to take a look at some of the other notable scores that happened around the country here in week number 11. We start with Mississippi State going to take on the Spartans of San Jose State and Mississippi State. They will officially be bowl eligible now that they are winning their sixth game and doing so in emphatic fashion, winning 52-14. As for the Michigan Wolverines, they will still remain undefeated <clears throat> on the season as they take down a hapless Indiana Hoosiers team 38-19 as the Hoosiers still looking for that very first win of the season. As for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they will get back to 500 on the year as Iowa wins 34-3 against Bowling Green. Bowling Green, a team that was ranked in the top 25 early in the season, but now just two and seven, they have fallen off the cliff. As for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they solidified themselves as a top 10 team in the country, a team possibly capable of going to the college football playoff as they beat a good Iowa State squad 42 to 21. The Cornhuskers are now nine and one on the season with an undefeated conference record. Auburn, meanwhile, proves that they deserve to belong in the top 25 for now as they'll take on a solid Georgia State squad. And Auburn does win 34-21, which does also get them bowl eligible here in the inaugural season of the NCSL. Now, we saw studio updates on this game earlier, but I didn't think that we saw the actual final score. UCLA was able to pull away in the fourth quarter. They were tested against Hawaii, though. The Bruins are still undefeated and still ranked number one in the entire country. As for teams that are entering their way into the top 25, welcome back to Arkansas State. They have rocky conference uh, results, but they do win another non-conference game 21-7. And they're back in the top 25 after this win against UL Monroe. But now we go ahead and take a look and see how the college football playoff, we had the most recent poll come out. What do we have any notable changes? We still have the same team at the very top, UCLA. They're number one in the country. However, the big shock here is that Syracuse, they jump over a couple of teams after their win against Boston College. They jump over Miami, who... Blew out Ford Atlantic. I didn't think they should have fell down a spot. And then Michigan also uh, going down one spot as well. Uh, they're at number 19 in the country. Other changes to note is that LSU moved up one after their win against Alabama. Texas A&M blew out Baylor. And they uh, win uh, go up to four spots to number 10 because of that. We also see Georgia in a tight battle against Vanderbilt. Kind of underperformed, but... College football playoff poll still moves them up four spots. They're at number 12 in the country. Baylor, because of their loss to Texas A&M on the road, they fall four spots to number 13 in the country, but still having a very good season as of right now. Minnesota was on by, but they're up four spots. They're at number 14. As for Cal, they take care of business against Oregon. They're now ranked number 15 in the most recent college football playoff poll. Michigan State almost being upset by Purdue, but in spite of that, Michigan State uh, able to move up three spots to number 16. Arkansas down five after a tough loss to Ole Miss. They're down five. Penn State, in spite of being on bye, uh, up a couple of spots. Army moves up five after a defensive win over the Pittsburgh Panthers. Oregon is down five after their loss to Cal. And then rounding out your group is Auburn. 
Pittsburgh, who just lost to Army. Arkansas State, who gets back into the college football playoff poll, uh, ranked number 25 in the coaches poll. Boise State is also in there. And then Navy is hanging on by a Fred, taking the last spot in the current college football playoff poll. So we've seen a lot of action here, but we're starting to close in on the end of the regular season. This will put a wrap into the week number 11 action. We only have three more episodes before we get into conference championships. Conference championships are just right around the corner right now. Who has what it takes to get to a conference championship game and solidify themselves into the college football playoff? We'll get cl closer to answering that question and a lot more in the next episode as next time you see this series on the channel, you will see week number 12 action here in the inaugural season of the NCSL. So with that being said, this is John Jay Gaming on the mic signing off. But before I do, I need you guys to go ahead and do me some favors. Smack that like button for me. And then also hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic signing off. But hoping you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.